Good morning, everyone. Um, I just came back from a, a 14-day self-quarantine in Cumbermere, uh, Ontario, which is a two and a half hours uh, drive from, from Ottawa. Uh, we have uh, the Companions of the Cross. We have a spiritual formation program house there. And I was there. I was there for more than uh, close to three weeks. You know, I extended my stay there. And because I went to, to the States uh, on March 11, I attended a conference there from March 12 to 14. And at, in the evening of that conference, I got a call from uh, our pastor here, Father Mark Goring. And he's telling me, Ken, you better come back. You know, because uh, there's a plan that the government will be closing the borders. And uh, because at that time, I was originally planning to go to Houston uh, on a five-day retreat there. And, uh, and I said, yeah, I better come back. So I came back uh, and spent, yeah, more, 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 close to three weeks in, in Cumbermere. And it was an excellent time there, you know. Uh, it was like being uh, in, in the house with, with Joseph, Jesus, Jesus, Joseph, and Mary in the house of Nazareth. And, yeah, I, I was uh, doing a lot of, like, praying, you know. Uh, one, one good thing, a blessing of a priest is that I could celebrate Mass every day and expose the Blessed Sacrament. So I was exposing the Blessed Sacrament the whole morning and the whole evening, praising the Lord, you know, and, and doing ordinary stuff like, you know, uh, cooking, uh, eating, uh, exercising, cooking, yeah, eating. And uh, I was also doing cross-country skiing there. So I really enjoyed my time there. And when uh, I was about to leave, there's a part of me that doesn't want to leave. Uh, uh, I could experience uh, what Peter, James, and John experienced in the Mount of Tabor when they saw Jesus transfigured. And they felt so good, and they said, Lord, why don't we pitch three tents here, and we could just stay here? And that was my feeling. I just want to pitch a tent in Cumbermere, and there's part of me that doesn't want to come back anymore. But of course, that's not reality. I have to come back, okay? And there's a part of me, really, that also miss all of you, really. I, I really, uh, although I don't see you here, but, you know, I could, I, I could imagine where you're seated here in, in, in this church. And I think one, one advantage of having no congregation here is that when you give a bad or bo boring homily, you don't see people sleeping. And you don't see people, like, throwing rotten tomatoes at you. Okay, so that's one advantage. But, uh, but I really do miss all of you. I hope you miss me too. Okay, so most of us here, most of us are in lockdown. You're in your homes, and, you know, it depends on how you see it, okay? Uh, I I've read this book uh, by Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And I would like to suggest you to read that during this lockdown. And there it, he talks about the power of perception, of how you perceive things. Uh, there's, there's, in, in that book, there's an illustration there that shows a man of this picture of a, of, a, of, a, of a woman. And in that picture, that person saw that woman as a young woman. And then that picture was also shown to another person, and the other person saw that as an old woman. But it's in reality, you know, so... On how you perceive things, if, if you see that picture as a young woman, your attitudes, your feelings, your behaviors will depend on that perception. And if you see that woman as an old woman, your thoughts, behaviors, feelings will also change, right? Will also be different. But in that picture, it's all, only one picture. And you could see both the old woman and the young woman there. So why, why am I saying this? You know, we're, 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 we're in lockdown. If you perceive that this lockdown is like you being in prison, okay, you're, you, you know, you will be, you will be, what will happen there is that you will be restless, you will be irritable, and you will be discontent, you know, because you couldn't go out, you couldn't go to your favorite restaurants, bars, uh, you couldn't hang out with your friends, you will feel miserable. But if you perceive it as a gift from God, God is giving us this gift right now, the time that we need. You know, maybe in the past you're saying, oh, I don't have time to do this and that because, you know, I don't have the time. Now, you know, and now God is giving you the time. How will you use this time wisely? That's the question that I would like to ask you. If you're going to watch like more than 200 
movies on Netflix or play video games like Wordscapes, you know, go to level 500 or something, you're just wasting your time. You're just wasting. I, I'm not saying you don't watch movies. I'm not saying you, you, you don't play vi- games or something. You could do that, but moderately. But ask God, how, how does God want you to use your time wisely right now? Maybe, you know, you, you, you've been so tired from work, maybe the Lord is asking you to rest. Just rest. Rest your body, okay? Maybe, you know, you, you didn't have the time to uh, spend quality time with your family. Now is the time. Spend quality time with your family. When you're, when you're eating uh, at the dinner table, you know, put aside that, that, that cell phone, that smartphone. You know, converse. You know, talk. Okay, you know, if, if, if you didn't have the time to, to pray or to read scripture, now is the time to, to go deeper in your relationship with God, okay? Because we don't know, we, we don't have control and we don't know how long will this be. It could be one month, two months, three months, we don't know. What I'm saying is that make the most of this time to grow in your relationship with God and in your relationship with with other people, okay? So, so that, that, that's the thing, you know? And, and people are saying, you know, n- now is Holy Week and we couldn't go to church. This Holy Week will, will, will not be that solemn, will not be as good as before. Uh, I, 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 I disagree with that. I disagree with that. And uh, in, in, in John chapter 4, Jesus was talking with this Samaritan woman. Uh, maybe you're, if you're not familiar with it, uh, read uh, John chapter 4. There was an encounter between Jesus and this Samaritan in the well. Okay, so uh, it was around noontime. Jesus was asking for water from the Samaritan woman, and the, the Samaritan woman uh, was getting water from that well. And Jesus was offering her this living water. Now, in that conversation, in John chapter 4, verse 21, Remember, the, Samaritan, the Samaritans, they're like half, they're, they're half Jews. They're considered unclean by the Jews. So these Samaritans, they couldn't go to Jerusalem to worship God in the temple. So they go to a, a, a mountain called Mount Gerizim, okay, or Mount Ebel. So in that mountain, that's where they worship, the Samaritans. The Jews, they go to Jerusalem to the temple. And of course, you know, in, 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 the, in the scripture, the, the, the mountain is where we encounter God. You know, like Moses, he went up to the mountain and he encountered God there. And there's the presence of the cloud in the mountain. In, in, in the temple also, it was filled with cloud. And that's the presence of God. Okay, so in that conversation between Samaritan, uh, the Samaritan woman and, and, and Jesus, so, uh, the Samaritan woman said this, our fathers worship on this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither, when, when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. It says, Jesus said, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. In truth. Okay? So we're called to worship the Lord in spirit and truth no matter where you are. Okay? In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, in section 1179, it says here, the worship in spirit and in truth of the new covenant is not tied exclusively to any one place. The whole earth is sacred and entrusted to the children of men. What matters above all is that when the faithful assemble in the same place, they are the living stones gathered 
to be built into a spiritual house. So wherever you are, you know, at, in your home, you are a living stone. You are building the spiritual house, which is the temple of the Lord. And always remember that in baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit. We become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And, and in, in our baptism also, we, 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 we participate in the, in the priesthood of Jesus, the common priesthood, not, not the ordained priesthood, but the common priesthood. So you have the temple, you are a priest, you could worship wherever you are, wherever you are. You know, in, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, it says, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Now, it didn't, Jeremiah didn't say, if you seek me in the church, you will find me. It says, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. That's wherever you are, at home, in prison, in the hospital, okay, whether, w- wherever. You could seek the Lord. You will able, be able to, able to encounter him in a very personal way. You know, and you could worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. You know, the Holy Spirit cannot be quarantined. You know, you could worship the Lord wherever you are. Okay? So that's why this is very important. That's why this Holy Week could still be the best Holy Week of your life. I, I, I truly believe that. Okay? Now, I would like to, to suggest to you one thing. I'll be, we'll be posting on Facebook right now on the scripture passages on the events of Holy Week from Sunday, Palm Sunday, to Easter Sunday. You could, you could download it, print it out, meditate on it. Meditate on it. Take some time, quiet time, meditate on it. Okay? When I say meditate, it's like going to a 4D movie. Okay, how many of you have seen, have, have been to a 4D movie? No? Okay. Okay, so in the past, there's the 3D movie, right? Like, it, it's, like it's like when you're watching a movie, uh, l- let's say Star Trek, and then the Star Trek is like really coming out. That, that, that's 3D. You know, it's three-dimensional. Okay? And, but right now, they're coming up with this 4D, 4D movie. You know, when, when you go there, when you sit, you know, and, and let's say you're riding a, a horse, you know, your, 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 sit, your, your chairs will, 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 will rock, right? And if it's raining, there's going to be like water that, uh, that will be sprinkled uh, on your face. And that's 4D. And what's 4D doing is that they want you to use all your senses, the five senses that we have, so that we will be able to enter in fully to the scene of what we're watching. And it's also the same. When we're meditating, we're using all our senses. When we're meditating on this, 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 uh, this Holy Week, you know, we're, 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 we're uh, journeying with the Lord. You know, in, in His suffering, you know, we, we, we see who's there. You know, what are we hearing? What are we smelling? Uh, what are we feeling? We're using our five senses in order to be able to enter in, okay, into that scene so that we will be able to encounter God, okay? Encounter Jesus. And as we meditate on the scenes of this Holy Week, remember that it was not the Jews who persecuted and crucified Jesus. Yes, they are, but it's all of us. It's our sins. You know, but with our pride and our arrogance, that's the crown of thorns that was put on Jesus. The sins of the flesh that we commit, that's the scourging at the pillar. The three nails that was, na- that was used to nail Jesus on the cross, that's our disobedience, our selfishness, and our spiritual slot. And what's the, pe- the, 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 the sword that pierced on the side of Jesus? That's the worst. And you know what that is? Indifference. Indifference. Ingratitude of what Jesus did for us on the cross. Okay? So, so meditate on that. 
meditate on the sins that contributed to the suffering of Jesus. Now, if it was our sins that crucified and put a lot of like suffering on Jesus, we could also console him. Okay? So what do I mean by that? Okay? So when Jesus was suffering, he foresaw in the future, in the present, the past, the present, the future, all the people were committing sins. And that has contributed all to his sufferings. But he also foresaw in the future all the people who would console him, who would give him comfort. So what do I mean by that? If you have a family member who has a terminal four cancer, or let's say you, 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 know, you, you, you have a, uh, a family member who has this COVID-19 virus and is in the ICU and is fighting for, for his life, what are you going to do? Are you going to party? You know, are you going to celebrate? No. No. You will take time to pray. And you will really intercede before God for a cure. Right? And, and, and as much as possible, although you, you couldn't be there to be with that person, you know, you, there's, there's that longing in you to be there for your loved one. Okay? And, and you want to comfort that person. You want to console that person to alleviate the pain that this person is experiencing. And this is also the same. As, as we meditate on, this, on the scriptures, we want to console Jesus. We want to alleviate the pain. And how do we do that? There are three ways of we do that. You know, the first one is that we repent from our sins. We repent. We ask for forgiveness. You know, we, we have these tears of repentance that the Lord wants to see from us. I know uh, you, you couldn't come to, uh, for, for confession, but, but just do the, the, the act of contrition from your heart. Just say the act of contrition from your heart. By doing that, you are consoling Jesus. You're comforting him in, in this pain. The second one is trust. We need to trust in the mercy and the love of Jesus for all of us. Okay? Because that's one of the greatest pain of Jesus is that he loves us so much. He loves us so much that he gave his life for us and yet people do not trust and do not believe in his mercy and in his love. So when we're trusting when we're trusting in, in, in His mercy, that's why in, 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 in this uh, divine mercy image, at the bottom there, it's at the bottom of the image, there's an inscription that says, I, Jesus, I trust in you. I trust in your mercy. I trust in your love. Okay? By doing that, you are consoling Jesus. The third thing that you could do in order to console Jesus is to do deeds of mercy by forgiving people. Okay? By, 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 by doing acts of charity. You know, there, there's so many people right now suffering right now with co this COVID-19, their family. Those who are in the front lines, those who are in the medical profession, they're, they're risking their lives. You know, we, we need to do whatever we can to help them, to do some form of deeds of mercy. You know, right now, you know, it, 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 there, people are... are, are like in a panic mode, you know, they, they go to, to, to groceries and they're, 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 they're hoarding. We should not be doing that. Instead, we, we need to look after the needs of our neighbors. Ask them, what do they need? Give, give. You know, the, the measure that we give is the measure that we will receive. You know, and we're going to experience a lot of joy when, when we do that. So deeds of mercy. Deeds of mercy that will console the heart of Jesus. So, you know, just, just, just to wrap up, it depends on you whether you want this Holy Week, the best Holy Week of your life or not. It's up to you. It's really up to you. It's how you perceive it. Okay? But if you, if, if you meditate, if you enter into this uh, Holy Week with a prayerful attitude, 
You know, if you're seeking Jesus with all your heart, you will find him. You will encounter him. And as you, as you meditate on, 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 on scriptures, you could also do the, uh, as you pray the, 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 the sorrowful mysteries of the rosary, you know, and, and uh, meditate on, on, on the, the sorrowful mysteries and take some time to pause. Don't just pray the, the, the rosary at once. You know, after each uh, mystery, pause and then meditate. What you could also do is uh, uh, meditate on the stations of the cross. You know, and instead of like walking, I, I know you couldn't come to church, but you could do the stations of the cross at your place. You know, in, in your quiet time, when you're sitting down, just meditate on one, one stations after another. And then enter in using, um, uh, it's like uh, this Holy Week in 4D. Uh, what, 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 I'm, what I'm proposing to, to, to all of you. And if you do that, I guarantee you, this will be the best Holy Week of your life. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit That we may perfectly love you And worthily magnify your Holy Christ our Lord.